Example 2 says changing area. A pebble is dropped into a calm pool of water, causing ripples to form in concentric circles as shown in the photo. The radius r of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of 2 feet per second. At what rate is the total area of the distributed water changing when the radius is 3 feet? Okay, lot to swallow there. We have that we're dealing with, it wants us to find the total area. So that means we need a formula for area, and we're finding the area of a circle. So if you remember, what's the formula for the area of a circle? The area of a circle is pi r squared. So we have our governing equation is a equals pi r squared. Okay, great, that's given to us. Now let's think about what else is given to us. Well, that's not given to us, we had to know that. Let's think what else is given to us. Well, it says, what is it when r equals three, so r equals 3 is given to us, and it says the radius is increasing, so that means a positive rate of change, at a rate of 2 feet per second, so that also tells us that r prime equals positive 2. It's increasing, so it's a positive 2. So they gave us our radius is 3, and our r prime is 2. Now notice, we cannot plug this given information in until we find the derivative of both sides, but you have to remember to find the derivative of both sides first. So let's go ahead then and find the derivative with respect to t of both sides of this equation. Well, the derivative of a with respect to t would be a prime, or dA dt. Then, just like we talked about on the previous page, the derivative of pi r squared, remember pi is just a number, so you would just drop down the 2, so it would be 2 pi r to the first power, but then we need to multiply that times r prime. Now that we've found the derivative of both sides, let's think about what they want. They want to know at what rate is the area changing. In other words, they want a prime. They want the rate at which the area is changing. Look at again at what they've given us. They've given us the fact that r is 3, so we can plug that in. And they've also given us the fact that r prime is 2, so we can plug that in. So plugging those values in, let's see what we're going to get. We'd have a prime equals 2 pi times r, which was given as 3, times r prime, which was given as 2. Well, that would be a equals, well, it depends if we want exact here, or do we want a, a decimal approximation. Reread the problem. It doesn't seem to me like they say. So I'm going to write the exact. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. So we would have a prime equals 12 pi. That would be the exact version of it, or we could use um, the estimated version of it. The estimated version of it would be, put that into your calculator. Um, I'll, I'll do to one decimal place, round to one decimal place. I'm getting about, what, 37.7? Please double check my math on that one. And let's think about the units here. This is the area of it find the area, it needs to be my units squared. So this would be my units here, my distance is feet squared per second. So there it is. How did I know that it was feet per second? Again, you can think about it. R here is in terms of feet. R prime is a rate of change, so that's feet per second. So you have feet times feet per second, which gives me feet squared per second. But that's how an area changes, is always your units squared per second. So there's our answer. I don't know, again, I, they might have wanted the exact answer. The exact answer was 12 pi feet per second, um, but that's, that's the answer. That's how you do it. Always read the problem, determine the governing equation, find out what they want, find out what they're giving you, find the derivative of both sides, plug in the given to get what they want. Let's look at the next one here. It says, find the rate of change of profit in dollars with respect to time in days, so our rate of change is gonna be dollars per day, right? When 50 units have been sold, sales have increased at a rate of 10 units per day, and P of X equals 200 minus 1 half X squared. So nice thing here, they're giving us that governing equation. So let's think about, it. let me write that equation down. Sorry, I'm gonna use black. P equals, and then it's 200, minus one half x squared. Okay, let's think about what they want. It says find the rate of change of profit. 
rate of change of profit, so they want P prime. And then it says 50 units have been produced, so that's telling me X is equal to 50. And now it says sales have increased at a rate of 10 units per day. So if it's 10 units per day, isn't that giving me units per day? That's giving me a rate of change of the units. So that's giving me X prime, isn't it? So what's given to me? Given to me is the fact that X equals 50 and X prime equals 10. Okay, so what do we do? We go back to our original equation. We're going to take the derivative with respect to t of both sides of our equation. The derivative of the profit would be p prime. That equals, well, what's the derivative of 200? The derivative of 200 is 0. And then what's the derivative of negative 1 half x squared? Well, that would be negative 1 half times 2x x prime. Let's clean that up and simplify. The twos are going to simplify. So I'm ending up with p prime equals, well, that would be negative x, x prime. Again, they want p prime. They give us our x value. They give us our x prime. So let's use that given information. Again, the given information here, x is 50. And then x prime is 10. So I'm going to plug in those values right here. I'm going to get p prime equals negative, And then I'd have 50 times 10, so that's going to be negative 500. This is an applied problem, so we do need units here. What does this mean? What's the rate of change? That would be negative 500. Well, it would be dollars per, and this is in terms of days. So what does that mean? That means their profit is decreasing by $500 over that next day. So it's not I mean, it is per day, but this is a very specific moment in time. It's when 50 units have been sold. So going on to the next day, that's when they're going to lose $500 a day. Okay. Again, this isn't what their profit is. Their profit isn't negative 500. It's just saying their profit is changing by losing $500 a day. So think about if you're a company, is that a good thing for you? Your profit's decreasing. So this means something's going wrong and you're going to need to look at that, right? Okay. Let's look at example four. It says a company is increasing the production of a product at a rate of 200 units per week. The weekly demand function is modeled by P equals 150 minus 0.002x. Notice that's the lowercase p. That's the price demand model that is not your profit function, okay? where P is the price per unit in dollars, and X is the number of units produced that week. Find the rate of change of revenue in dollars with respect to time in weeks when the weekly production is 2,000 units. Okay, maybe reread that problem a second time. What do they want? They want the rate of change of revenue. In other words, they want R prime. We need to find the function we need to find R of X, which remember R of X is X times P. That's your price times your quantity, right? But then they give us P, don't they? They give us that P is the 150 minus 0.002X. So doesn't that tell me that R of X would then be X times 150 in parentheses, 150 minus 0.002X. I'm going to write this in descending order. This would be R of X equals, and that would be negative 0.002X squared plus 150X. Okay? So that's my revenue function. I have my function. I know what they want. They want the rate of change in revenue. Let's also look at what they give us. It says a company is increasing production at a rate of 200 units per week. So that's a rate, and that's how much the units is changing. So that would be X prime. And then it says when the weekly production is 2,000 units. So that tells me how many units, so that tells me X. So let's look at our given information. We know that X prime is equal to 200, and we know that X is equal to 2,000. So what do we do now? We look at our original, not the original equation, the equation that we came up with, which was the revenue equation. 
We're going to take the derivative with respect to t of both sides of this equation. Derivative with respect to t. So what's the derivative of r? Well, the derivative of r is r prime. The derivative of negative point zero zero two x squared would be negative point zero zero four x, and then it would be to the first power. But remember, we need x prime in there. Plus the derivative of one hundred and fifty x. Remember, is one hundred and fifty x prime because the derivative of x is x prime. Now, what do we use? We use our given information yet again. Given information is that x prime is equal to 200, and also our given information was that x is equal to 2,000. So let's plug that in. When we plug that in, we'd have r prime equals negative 0 0.004 times x, which was 2,000, times x prime, which was 200, plus 150 times x prime, which again was 200. Go ahead and plug that into your calculator and let's see what you get. I'm getting a value of 28,400. Please double check my math. I apologize if I make an error. We need to look at this. It says the rate of change is price, which is in dollars. The number of, of time, or sorry, let's look here. It, it's um, in dollars and X is the number of units produced in a week. So this revenue is going to be in terms of dollars per week. It's a positive number, so we know it's increasing at value of $28,400 per week. So there it is right there. At that point in time, I don't know where they're at, but when they're at that week, they should expect their revenue to increase by $28,400 over the next week of time, whenever they're at that exact moment. And that exact moment is when they produced 2,000 units and it was changing at a rate of 200 units per week, increasing at a rate of 200 units per week.